Good morning. I am Dr. Rothon Oshathos. This is the 36th lesson of the International E-Learning Project on Classical Miasmatic Constitutional Homeopathy. In the uh, two lessons ago, we have talked and described a case analysis of a psoic remedy of natrum muriaticum, of a psoic constitutional picture. Last lesson, in the previous lesson, we have talked about a case presentation that had to do with a psychotic constitutional picture, medorinum. And we will continue in this case with a syphilitic constitutional picture. It's very important to understand the phenomenon of the primary and the secondary behavior. When we have to do with a psoric or a psychotic constitutional picture, most of the times we don't have any secondary behaviors. What you see is what you get because they are, they tend to have straight behaviors. Yet, whenever we come to syphilitic remedies, which are the most um, frequent ones nowadays in the syphilitic era that we live in, then we have a variety of secondary behaviors. What you see is not what you get. The syphilitic individuals tend to adopt masks, secondary behaviors, that are different a lot or are even opposite, toward, uh, opposite compared to the real behavior of the person to his primary behavior. The primary behavior, as we have told in previous lessons, is the genuine constitutional behavior of the person, while the secondary behaviors are fake. The person pretends to be, adopts a certain theatrical role, adopts a social image, that doesn't correspond to his primary constitutional, real constitutional behavior. So, when you do repertorizing or keynote prescribing or computer expert systems, you are lost. You have lost the correct prescription. Because if you don't discriminate between what the person says and what in reality he thinks, what the person does and why he does it, if you don't go and find out the primary intention of the person, you are lost. That's why our effort is to have a miasmatic uh, diagnosis first, to understand miasmatically with what person do we have to do. If you have to do with a syphilitic individual, most of the times you have to be very careful and you have to try to read between the lines. You have to see behind the mask in order to be correct. The problem is that in our repertories and in our previous materials, old materia medicas, there is no discrimination between the primary and the secondary behavior. For example, weeping, crying. A syphilitic person, for example, lachesis, pretends to cry a lot, to weep a lot, and to be a very, very sensitive woman that is the victim of others. But this is just a mask. This is a secondary behavior. It's not the true, real, primary, constitutional behavior of the person. 
In the same rubric, Weeping 3, you can also find Pulsatila. Pulsatila is a psoric person as to intention and thinking, although she is quite psychotic as to expression of her emotions. So, in the same rubric, Weeping 3, you can find a primary behavior of a psoric Pulsatila person, a genuine sensitive person, a truly sensitive and very easily weeping person, but without any syphilitic intention. Pulsatila wants consolation and wants to, take, to, to be uh, thought of and talked to, but this is a childish, a, a, a pure intention, nothing very egoistic. While on the other hand, you have the intention of a Lachesis syphilitic person that pretends to be the victim and weeping a lot and very, very sensitive, while she is not. She is manipulating others through this egoistic syphilitic be fake behavior. She wants to do others, uh, especially her husband and her children, to do the things she wants, the way she wants it. She wants to control others, to manipulate others, and she uses this secondary sensitive weeping behavior in order to manipulate others. You see, behind the very, the, the seemingly similar behavior, external behavior, secondary behavior of the sensitive weeping person, you have different intentions, a psoic intention, and the syphilitic intention. So you have to discriminate. So today we were going to, to uh, analyze a syphilitic case and in the future I will try to analyze more cases of such syphilitic behaviors of the same syphilitic remedy. We are going to present many cases in order to see the various and most of the times opposite secondary behaviors adopted by the same constitutional picture, by the same person. Now, let's go and see how do we analyze and interpret the words, the exact words and the expressions of the patient in a syphilitic case. Woman, 50 years old, private employee, divorced the last five years. Divorced five years. Two children, two daughters, 30 years old and 60 years old that they live together with, with their mother after the divorce. 170 centimeters height, 80 kilos weight. She is a fat lady. She lived in the country for many years until 10 years ago. She lives now in, in Athens with her daughters. The doctor that took the case that we are going to analyze says that, it's not my case, says that this lady was very loquacious. Loquacious 3, even 4. Extremely loquacious. She didn't stop talking. Other non-verbal uh, information about the patient from the doctor. Too much care for her look, too much makeup, very high heels. She comes to the doctor complaining mainly for insomnia, sleeplessness, five years, the last five years. From mid she, she goes to sleep and then she wakes up at midnight and until 3 a.m. She can't sleep. Why? Because she has these thoughts about her children. When are they going to get married? Her daughters. 
And she also says, I am done with my girls. Now what? They are, my daughters are, are grown up. They will leave me. And then what about me? Now what with my life? Anxiety, she also suffers from anxiety and melancholy the last five years after her divorce. She says about her husband, Indifference, no cooperation, did not take in consideration what I was telling him. No emotion, no tenderness from her previous, from her ex-husband side. Whenever he cursed me, I wanted to die, she says about her ex-husband. What about the relation with your daughters? I worry about who they will choose, who they will marry. Always try to discover if they are happy about her daughters. When their companion upsets them, I always say something and then I regret it. What about her friends? I want calmness, no dependence, not to be pressed or judged by her friends, female friends. Want pure friendship, real emotions. What about her companion? She doesn't have a companion at this, uh, at the present. But how would she like her future companion? To discuss, no anger, to love me and show it to me, to appreciate my offer because, as for me, it's quite certain that I will love him purely and honestly. Irritability, one, says the doctor. When they betray my friendship, when they accuse me for no reason, when they mistake what I say, okay, I do lie a little sometimes. Weeps too, in front of others too, sighing, she sighs many times, too. Introvert too about her deep uh, secrets, her deep uh, matters, personal matters. Nobody can understand you nowadays. She doesn't talk about her uh, very personal problems because nobody can understand you nowadays. She considers herself quite smart and she cannot uh, deal easily with slow people. What about books? She likes reading about true stories, not fake ones. True confessions of one's soul, true emotions. So, these are the notes of the doctor that took the case of a student of mine. Let's analyze these cases. As I've told you in the previous cases that we have analyzed, uh, they are cases that have been taken by my students at their first steps. I deliberately choose these cases because they have many notes, even notes that are not useful, but they have many ma much material, many notes, and I insist on the uh, I insist telling my student to write down the exact words of the patient. Uh, my notes are a few and very short because of my experience I note down a little, uh, a little uh, not much uh, because I take the case being experienced and so I don't need much notes. So in order to be an educational case analysis, we have to have a, a young do homeopathic doctor, a new homeopathic doctor case. For another reason also, in order to correct the notes and correct 
my student. We will again, once again follow the scheme, the, 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 la the order in which we analyze the case. First of all, we read the case, simply read, to take a first raw picture of the case. We have done that already. Second, we see the background of the patient, the personal data. What's the background? We have a woman, 50 years old, private employee, divorced five years, two children, two daughters that stay with her, grown-ups, 30 years old and 26 years old, not married yet. She is fat. She used to live in the country for many years, for 40 years, and the last 10 years she lives in Athens with her daughters. Non-verbal data, Laguasias 3-4, too much care for her look, too much makeup, high heels. This is the background. She comes to us because the last five years after her uh, divorce, she has anxiety, melancholy and insomnia. She has too much thoughts about her children, about getting married and settled down. And she has this uh, thought, what am I going to do when my girls are married and move out of my house? Now what? This is the background. We have, what is the conclusion from this background? What is the possible scenario? We have a woman that has got married early, quite early, if she's 70 years old, and her daughter her older daughter is 30 years old, that means that she must have got married at the age of 18 and got pregnant at the age of 20. So she, she used to live in the country. In the country it's a common thing for a woman to, at that time, to get married uh, early and to have children early. Um, and her whole life from that point on, especially if she didn't work at that time, was her children. She got married very early, possibly her husband was quite older. He was the one to have the financial um, independence. Then she had two children quite early. She got engaged raising her children, and her whole life possibly was her children. That's why she says, now that my children will get married, what am I going to do? Now what with my life? I got divorced five years ago. My children will get married in a few years. Another thing that shows that her whole life is she, her children, she has an attachment to her children, to her daughters, is that at the age of 30 and 26 years old, they are still living with her. It's a quite frequent uh, scenario here in Greece, especially for those who live in the country. They... Uh, the children stay with their mother, especially when it's a, an overprotective mother, a dominant mother. They stay with their mother until getting married or until they die or their mother dies. It's the usual, the frequent scenario, scenario of the domineering mother that manipulates her children. It's a possible scenario. We will see if it is confirmed. For the present being, due to my experience, 
because I have seen so many patients, I start thinking about these as the most possible scenario. And then we have the divorce, and then we have the accusations about the, her husband. So, the next step is to see if this person is mostly syphilitic, psychotic, or psoric. Let's see about it. Is it psychotic? Let's start from the less possible miasma. Is she psychotic? From what she says and from the way she would have acted if she was very strong and very focused on having fun and not so much on caring about her daughters, accusing her husband and so on, and because she longs for a companion uh, and what she, uh, 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 because of how she describes her companion to be very sensitive, to be very um, real, to be very caring about her and so on, this is not a psychotic description. It's an either psoric or syphilitic description. So, there aren't any rubrics that could uh, drive us towards a psychotic person. About the books she writes, she wants to read, true stories, not fake, true confessions of one's soul, true emotions. This is not a psychotic description and preference of books. This is either a syphilitic or a psoic. So, we have to do either with a psoric or a syphilitic person. In order to decide if it is a true primary constitutional picture and not a mask, a secondary syphilitic uh, behavior, what should I look for? For the characteristics of the syphilitic mayas. Exaggeration, <coughs> syphilitic egoistic intention, manipulation, and uh, uh, let's find out if and, and um, mm, inconsistencies between what she says in one place and what she says, if she says the opposite in another question. And inconsistencies between what she says and what she really does. So, exaggeration, inconsistencies, syphilitic egoistic uh, intentions, manipulation. Try to see if we have to do with a syphilitic person. There is this scenario that we have a person that is probably quite overprotective in a syphilitic way because her daughters still live with her, because she says, I, when I am done with my girls, now what? What am I going to do? Someone could say that this is also a psoric thing. We have a psoric attachment of her to her daughters. Yet, we have a person that says that uh, worry about who they will choose. She doesn't want possibly to define her daughters life, but to define even who they will get married to. I always try to discover if they are happy. This is an exaggeration. My uh, uh, hypothesis is that she all the time asks them, how are you? What's going on with your companion? 
uh, how is this, how is that, and they, their do her daughters get angry, and that's why she says, I always try to discover if they are happy, because possibly she asks them all the time, they get angry and tell them, shut up, and that's why she tries indirectly to discover if they are happy. And what she does when she, she finds out that they are upset, when their companion upsets them, I always, always say something and then I regret it. Why does she regret it? She doesn't regret it because uh, she truly regrets it, morally, because she says I was wrong. She regrets it because her daughters start shouting at her, or her, the, the companion of her daughters starts shouting at her. But she, consists, she, she insists on interfering with her daughter's life and exaggerates. I always say something. Exaggeration. She says, she accuses a psoric person would say that she got divorced five years ago, but even if pressed by the doctor, she wouldn't accuse so much her ex-husband. She wouldn't accuse so much her ex-husband, or she would say nothing about it. Or she would simply say, if pressed, a psoric person, uh, we didn't get along. We had some differences. She will, a sorry person will say something um, general. She wouldn't go into accusing. In this case, we have her talking straight ahead, straight uh, about her husband. First of all, she has insomnia, anxiety, melancholy after the divorce. And she accuses her husband as indifferent, no cooperation, did not take into consideration what I was telling him about. My reading through the lines, between the lines, my interpretation is that I have to do with a syphilitic person, a domineering person, she is a domineering person, that wanted all things to be done her own egoistic way and uh, that's why she says she, he was indifferent and what he wants from a future companion to discuss, no end here, to love me and show it to me, to appreciate my offer because as for me it's quite certain that I will love him purely and honestly. What does she say? She describes herself and she exaggerates about it that she's very honest, very pure as to her emotions. We confirm that when she says about books, she also exaggerates and talks about herself. True stories, not fake. Uh, true confessions of one's soul, exaggeration. True emotions. Once again, she insist on telling us, on showing off that she's a very pure person, a very emotional person, a very true person, a very calm person. What she wants from her friends, female friends? Calmness. Not to be pressed or judged. Want pure friendship, real emotions. In many cases concerning her ex-husband, her future companion, her friends, her daughters. What she does is an exaggeration. She wants to convince us, she projects the secondary syphilitic image of a person who is very sensitive, weeping, weeping in front of others, sighing, <sighs> the syphilitic showing off, sighing in order for the others to
to ask her, why are you sighing? Why are you uh, weeping? Oh, I had so many troubles in my life. My ex-husband did this and that to me. I so much care about my daughters when they are going to get married. Their companion did this and that to them and I'm so sensitive. I so much love my daughters and I do care so much about them and I worry about their future. Now I am uh, 50 years old, my daughters will get married, I am divorced, what's going to happen to me? All my life I have devoted to my children. I sacrificed my life for my children. This is the interpretation. This is what I mean by reading between the lines. Not just making a scenario, a scenario that is flying up in, in the sky without any uh, foundations in the rubrics, in the words of the patient. We have confirmed this scenario. This is a very frequent secondary syphilitic behavior. The syphilitic mother and wife that pretends to be the victim of her husband and of the difficulties of life, and the woman that has sacrificed her life for her children and for her good-for-nothing husband that she uh, accuses all the time, the person that is sensitive and crying and weeping, that is very good, very sensitive, very religious and wants the good of, uh, for everybody, but this is in inconsistency what she really does. Nobody, no, no syphilitic person will come to you and say, I am mean, I am malice, I am uh, shouting all the time towards others, I am domineering, I am manipulating, I am very jealous. Nobody will say easily this thing to you. She comes to you and will project another image, the good image. You, the doctor, are the one to read between the lines, to interpret this behavior, to find the primary behavior. That's the art of case taking. The science to evaluate correctly the rubrics and the art to find the scenario and to see what's going on behind what the person projects to you. If we are not acquainted with the phenomenon of the primary and secondary behavior of the masks that the individuals tend to adopt for many reasons, social reasons, egoistic reasons and so on, reasons of manipulating, we are lost. We are going to prescribe pulsatilla for this woman. Not a, we are not going to prescribe a syphilitic remedy. So, we find exaggeration. Let's see this exaggeration. Loquacius 3-4 is an exaggeration. Too much care for her look, high heels. She comes to the doctor with high heels and too much makeup. She is not going out on to have fun at night so as to put her very uh, good clothes and high heels. It's an exaggeration. And it's an exaggeration because she has lived until 40 years old in the country and the last 10 years in, in Athens and it's a common thing for a, a, a woman that was living in the country when she comes in the city, in the capital city to try to imitate the look of the uh, women that are, uh, were born in the capital city and so in trying to do so, she exaggerates. She wears high heels all the time, too much care about, too much lipstick, too much makeup, and so on. So we have 
a woman from the country that is not uh, too much educated, uh, gone to the university or dealing or cultured, and she's dressed uh, huge. My reading through the lines convinces me that she is dressed in a kirsch way. She, maybe the uh, fashion police would, uh, would put a fine to her. She would have to pay some money to the fashion police by wearing high heels and too much makeup when coming to the doctor. Lachesis is dressed like this, with a kirsch uh, look, exaggerating, and without any aesthetic. <clears throat> this thing, thoughts about the marriage of your children, shows us the attachment to her children. And this also, I am done with my girls when they are married. Now what? She was so attached to her children and domineering, then when their children are gone off, off the house, of her house, what will she do? Who, whom is she going to find to manipulate and, and domineer on? Probably a future companion that she wants to be calm, to be able to discuss, to love me and show it to me, to appreciate my offer, because as for me, it's quite certain that I will love him purely and honestly. She exaggerates. She once again shows off that she is very pure and honest. But not all her friends, her friends try to press her and judge her. She has pure friendship and real emotions, not her friends. That's what she implies. When she exaggerates so much about her being so calm, so good, so true, so emotional, so sensitive, she implies that that's not the case with other people and with her friends. That was not the case with her ex-husband. It is rare to find a new companion that will be like her. She also says that she gets angry when, the, when others betray her friendship and accuse her for no reason. When they mistake what she says and in, in an honest moment of hers, she says, okay, I do lie a little sometimes. A syphilitic person, as a rule, most of the times, will tell you that she is annoyed or getting angry with those things that she herself does to the others. Be careful. When a syphilitic person or a lachesis person says that she doesn't like gossiping at all, it's because she herself <coughs> is a very loquacious and gossiping person. Therefore, thinking and taking in consideration some her behavior, she believes that if I am gossiping, if I am suspicious, all other persons are like that. So I have to be very careful what I say because others will mistake what I say or will gossip me later on. So I will be introvert because others will gossip on me. 
So that's why I say that I hate gossiping. I'm afraid of gossiping. Because this is my case. And I project my case to others. That others think and act as I do. When we have to do with syphilitic people. When she says that she gets angry uh, Um, when she says uh, that when they betray my friendship and accuse me for no reason, it's only because she accuses others. And she did that when she talk, has talked to us, to us about her husband. She started accusing him. A person that says that hates when others accuse her, it's mainly because she accuses others. A person that says that she never lies and she hates when others lie to her, it's because most of the time she lies. A person that says that she doesn't like stupid people or slow-minded people, it's because she considers herself smart and very quick. So we have to be able to know these things in order to understand, uh, in order to read between the lines, in order to find the deeper primary behavior of the person. And someone could say that a solid person telling the truth and being honest may say that doesn't like lies, doesn't like to be accused, doesn't like to be manipulated. Yes, he may say this, but he won't exaggerate about this. You see, the difference between the psoric and the syphilitic, while saying or doing the same things, is that the syphilitic person exaggerates because he tries to convince the doctor and others that he is very honest, very calm, very sincere, very caring about the others, very religious, very moral. This exaggeration reveals to us the syphilitic characteristics and nature of this person. And, in addition, if this exaggeration is done for egoistic syphilitic intentions in order to project a psoric good social image, in order to use it to manipulate others. And we have so many exaggerations and inconsistencies and intentions syphilitic, egoistic, for manipulation. It runs through the whole case. Let me see some more. Accusing her husband, no cooperation, indifference, did not take in consideration what I was telling him. If we interpret this, he didn't do what I wanted. No emotion, no tenderness, because she is very emotional, as she says. Whenever he cursed me, I wanted to die. Exaggeration. She sees too much TV too much soap operas. Haven't you watched those soap operas where syphilitic persons say, Oh, my husband curses me. I want to die. If you want to die, if you honestly want to die, why don't you jump for the balcony? Why don't you take pills and die? 
why for 10 or 20 or 30 years you say, I'm suffering, I want to die. If for many years you say, I want to die, and you don't do it, it's a, it's, you are pretending, you are showing off, you are playing the role of the victim, the, the, the uh, poor victim. My life has no meaning. The one who has suicidal tendencies, for example, like a psoric orum metallicum, doesn't say easily that he wants to die. And he does suicide, he does commit suicide. He doesn't project it to the others in order to manipulate them. <clears throat> Why? She doesn't worry only about her daughters, about who they will choose. And my uh, uh, supposition is that she, all the time, loquacious, all the time, if she is loquacious at the daughter, doctor, why not be loquacious at her daughters all the time? You didn't get married. When are you going to get married? Uh, try to marry a rich man. 